What's up, everybody? It's Power Sports Steve coming to you from Extreme Power Sports, Opelika, Alabama. Today, we're looking at the entire Suzuki King Quad lineup. We've got the 400, the 500, and the Big Mac Daddy 750. So, come with me. Let's take a look. We're going to talk about some of the features and some of the colors that are available as well. All right, first off, this is the 400. For those of you that don't know, there's a 400 available in an automatic transmission in a fully, uh, or I should say just a five-speed manual version. Now manual meaning there is no clutch, it's a semi-automatic clutch, so you just shift gears, but there's no manual clutch on it. So the cool thing about the Suzuki 400, a lot of people don't know, is even in the auto or the manual transmission mode, you've got reverse, neutral, high range, and low range. So if you're feeling like you need a little more grunt, put it in low range and off you go. So Suzuki King Quads, this is the camo. It's their own camo pattern. Nobody else has this same camo pattern. It's kind of cool. A little different than what everybody else offers. On the 400, it is selectable two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. So the way that that works is right here on the dash, you have a switch. You can see that it says two-wheel drive. It's got the little dots here that tells you when you want to go to four-wheel drive. Flip that down, shows full wheel drive. And of course, I'll tell you on the dash, we'll show that here in just a minute as well. Uh, one thing you have, you got a 12 volt outlet here on the rack, or on the plastic, I should say. Uh, one thing on the 400, you see that you get metal racks, front and back. A lot of companies are going to the plastic racks. It's kind of nice that they still have the old school uh, metal racks on it. Front bumper comes on it, stock. Now, we did add, upgrade the tires and wheels on this one. This has a set of 27-inch tall tires on it with the SS wheels. Uh, really nice upgrade. A lot of people love to put the bigger tires on. This is something sometimes we do from the factory. Uh, one thing to make a note on this machine is it does have disc brakes on the front, but it has a drum brake on the back. It comes with the tow hitch already on it as well. So you put you a ball on there, whatever you want to do to hook up. Now you don't pull your trailer around or a little yard cart or whatever you guys want to do. Um, some brake adjustments here on the drum brake. You've got two controls for the drum brake. You've got a handbrake and you also have your foot brake as well that operates the rear. Um, basically one of these is for the handbrake, one's for the foot brake as well. Kind of a nice feature. You also notice there's two shocks, one on each side. On the back basically kind of gives you a semi-independent suspension. Not a full independent suspension like we'll talk about here on the 500 and the 750. Um, but a little better ride than what just a single mono shock would do. Uh, I got a diff breather on here as well. This vehicle is shaft driven, so you don't have any chains, you don't have sprockets, nothing to lube back here. Uh, pretty much gas and go for the most part. Um, popping the seat off, it's got a little latch back here on the back. Pop the seat off, you'll notice you've got a little uh, storage box back here. You can pop these little pins, gain access. Can't put a whole lot in there, maybe like your. Uh, Peanut butter and jelly sandwich or something. I don't know. Uh, Toolkit, tow rail, whatever you want to put in there. You can see the little factory uh, toolkit that comes with it. Easy access to your battery if you need to charge the battery or something like that. Also, a big important thing you've got access to your air box. You've got to keep those air filters clean. That is the life of the motor. And I'm not going to try to put all that on back with one hand, so we're just going to kind of leave it. All right. So, Turn the key on, kind of show you the dash and the controls and everything on here. You got a kill switch here on the left hand side. You've got light control, high beam and low beam. Uh, one thing to note on the Suzuki is to turn the lights on. I don't know if you can see this. So, you've got off, you have ignition on, and you can see that little uh, decal, if you want to call that. Basically, that turns your lights on. So, if this machine was running with the lights on and you just want to turn your lights off, you just turn it back one position. If you turn it back two, then you're gonna kill the machine. So don't do that. Also, if it's really cold outside, Suzuki puts a cold start or a kind of a fast idle uh, from the factory. Basically, it's just gonna rev up the engine a little bit. It's kind of like a choke, except it's not really a choke. It just kind of raises your RPM until it warms up a little bit. So you can see it's got a speedometer, clock, fuel gauge on the right-hand side. Up you see the top for the neutral, reverse, coolant light, fuel injection light, letting you know everything's operating correctly. Um, hour meter, odometer, and a trip meter, of course. 
So I mentioned about the full wheel drive selector. So right now it does not say anything on the dash about that. If you swap it to full wheel drive, of course the machine has to move a little bit before it will engage. I'm gonna rock it here. Maybe I can get it to light up. Yeah, maybe we'll have to start it. Let's see. stuff behind me. Uh, for its engagement from the drive. Basically what has to happen is everything has to line up in the drivetrain for its engagement from the drive. Um, Any of you that have been around in the location. Pull this up. You can hear the shape machine run. Be quiet. It doesn't make a lot of noise. Uh, it does have a parking brake here on the left hand side. You squeeze the brake. It's got a little locker here that locks that down. It's got a perch mount and a bit of mirror in some states. It's just pretty big. That's about it. I don't know if I mentioned this brand for the Yaha Dog. And it's not even the 400. Let's go and uh, take a look at the 500. Alright, this is the 500 King Quad here in the standard green color. Uh, one thing to make it on the 500. Available with or without power steering. This is the power steering model. Of course, it tells you right here on the top that it's power steering. This has the composite rack system on it, unlike the 400. It's got metal under it, but it has the kind of the polymer top plate, same way on the back. So, another one on the back. One thing about the 500 and the 750, you've got a full independent suspension, which means you're going to have more ground clearance, you're going to ride a little bit better, all the above. Now, if you notice on here, you don't see a hitch. That's because the hitch plate has not been installed. Um, you can obviously tow with this thing as well. Uh, also, looking at the back, you've got two trunks on here, which is kind of cool. See, this gives you a little bit more storage. Not a whole lot of space. Yeah, I can stick my hand in here, but not very far. The other one here from the factory is going to have your owner's manual and everything in it. A little bit bigger. Again, not too much space, but kind of cool. All right, full disc brakes, front and back, of course, shaft driven. Um, CVT transmission, high and low range on the transmission as well. So just like the 400, basically. All right, one thing that's kind of cool on the 500 and the 750, by the way, the 500 and 750 are set up the same way um, as far as the four-wheel drive system goes. So Suzuki 500 and 750 has two-wheel drive, push-button four-wheel drive. When you put it in four-wheel drive, you also have a dip lock. So what that means, it's going to lock all four tires solid, no slippage whatsoever. And normal four-wheel drive, kind of like the 400 and you know, a lot of the Hondas, and some other brands basically have a limited slip front diff is what that means when it's just regular four wheel drive a little different dash we'll talk about that here in just a second uh, controls start light same kind of thing as the 400 kill switch you also have a reverse override so reverse override means when this thing is in reverse you can basically go as fast in reverse as you can forward not really a good idea for a lot of people i had a friend break an arm <laughs> on another unit trying to uh, go super fast in reverse. Not a good idea, so I don't really recommend that. Uh, so don't be like that. So we'll turn the key on real quick. Same way on the lights, off, on, lights, on. So, cool thing, real quick. 500, 750. So the lights are just on. You see just the two bottom lights are on. You also see that there's a top light. So this one is not on. Until you change it over to the auxiliary mode, that is going to put all three lights on all at the same time. Doesn't need a better one. You're also going to notice we've already installed a winch on this machine. We put bigger wheels and tires on this machine as well. It's got a set of 26s on this one. Really a sweet looking ride. Um, same parking brake as the 400, by the way, same lock mechanism. Mentioned the gauge while I go, you know, 
gear indicator, speedometer, trip meter, clock, fuel gauge, etc. Uh, can change to trip meter A and B back to your odometer. On the top is going to change your hour meter. Service indicator, so this is going to count backwards from when it's scheduled to be for your first service, so you don't lose track. Clock on it. That's pretty much it. Pretty basic. Uh, we're going to start this machine for you. Super quiet, super smooth. This thing is really, really rough. So I mentioned the full-wheel drive system. Push the button to full-wheel drive. Once you hit that button, you're going to see the full-wheel drive pop up. If you decide to lock the differential, you're going to flip that up. Get a notification on the dash. We're going to put this one in here too. Just so you can see it. Alright, so there you can see it's engaged. So when you have these extra little tires and wheels lit up, what that means is you've locked your differential solid. So this thing has ultimate traction. Really, really nice feature. Um, it's on the first, the high range, low range, etc. You are limited on your top speed and you have to get locked as well. Disengage that. Next, the wheels come off. Unlock the four-wheel drive. Four-wheel drive light goes off. So, super, super sweet and shape. And high range, low range. Super quiet on the gear. Very, very little noise. Ah, I forgot one of the coolest features in the 500 and the 750. All right. So, what Suzuki does, they give this little extra box on the front. It's supposed to be dry, or waterproof, excuse me. I mean, take that with how much you paid for the information. May or may not be waterproof, but it's supposed to be. It's got a little sill on the outside, it's supposed to keep water out. You can put your wallet in here, car keys, you know, hide something from your wife. I don't know, it's funny, something like that. Um, so, and then one more thing, fuel gauge. All the way in the back. A lot of people are used to seeing the fuel gauge up here. Suzuki does not do that. Reason being, these 500 750s are built differently. They have the air box all the way at the top. So what that means is if you're one of those guys that's going to be in the deep mud, water, all that kind of fun stuff, um, your air box is all the way up here as high up out of the dirt and water and everything that it can be. Really, really nice. Super smart. Um, kind of see under here all your electrical stuff tucked away nice and neat uh, little factory toolkits up here as well and again easy access to your battery that's pretty much it on the 500 now we'll take a look at the 750 real quick really the 750 is the 500 with the 750 motor really no difference uh, this is the Suzuki Red of course I've already put the winch on it this has a set of 27's on it Really, really nice package on it. Controls, high range, low range, diff lock, gauge cluster, dry storage, air box, fuel gauge, same independent suspension on the vehicle. Really no difference on it whatsoever. Again, just super, super nice. Really you need to drive these machines. If you're in the market for a big bore ATV, this is even 750 is really, really worth checking out. Well, folks, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments section or leave me a question and we'll get back to you. And I uh, appreciate you all watching. Take care.